Hi, and in this video I'm going to just go through how to create your formative assessment using a Google form and how to set up those page breaks and jump your questions from one page to another. Your list of requirements will be here. Here's a simple video on how to use the basic features of Google Forms and we're going to be submitting this in Canvas. To get started, you would go to drive.google.com. If you organize your files and folders, you'd pick the folder that you want. At that point, you would go to New. Then you're going to click on Google Forms. New, More, and we're going to choose Google Forms. At this point, you can change your settings. Since we're going to be having multiple pages, you might want to show the progress bar at the bottom. You can change your theme. All the possible themes are over here on the right. So pick something that is appropriate for your grade and subject. You can click up here to title your formative assessment. Choose a title that works for your grade and subject. And then to get started, you're going to start editing the question. So I'm going to choose Edit Question. And here's where you would write the question. Then you would choose what type of question that you want to do. So for the first option, let's say the answer was yes. And this answer was no. There's no way on here to tell the students if they're correct or not. So the way that you can do that is you can check off go to a page based on the answer. Well, we only have one page right now, so we don't have anywhere for it to go. So what we're going to do is go down here and we're going to add a page break. All right, so it's now added our page break for us. And you title these in a way that would make sense so when you're going and choosing the pages this would make sense so right now um, since this is just a sample I might type you know question one and this is just so you guys can see incorrect answer down here you can put additional information so you might explain the concept right here that they missed and maybe we want to add some more stuff to this page to help them out maybe we want to add an image that might help them understand the concept better maybe we want to throw in a YouTube video to help explain the concept that they weren't understanding and once you've added in your resources you're gonna to need to add an, another question so that they can get sent on to the next question. So you might ask, do you understand blah -de blah And you can put options like yes, no, I still need a little bit more help. And it's up to you what you want to do at this point. If they still say no, you can still send them on to yet another resource or you can send them on to the next question and just make note of which students need further guidance. I'm going to say go to page based on answer. Well, I still don't have another page, so I need to go down here and add a page break. And we're going to call this page question two, and you might specify the name of the question so it makes more sense to you when you're doing this. And then on this page, I'm going to go ahead and ask question two. What is blah -de blah and you can give answers. And then we want to send this to a page based on their answer. And I'm going to go back to the beginning and make sure I've sent all my questions to a certain page. So I'm going to edit the question one. And we want to say if they get the answer right, they're going to go on to question two. If they get the answer wrong, we're going to go to incorrect answer for question one. So now 
I've got this one done. Then we'll edit this one and make sure I'm redirecting it. We're going to send them go ahead and go on to question two once you've gotten your additional help. You can even link additional activities you want them to do to help your students along. And then you would want to go ahead and add a page break and continue on. And I'll show you a finished sample. So here's one and I included images in mine so that the students could see. This is a web design course and we're talking about design principles. And they've got 10 different principles that they learned in my class. And to make sure that they really understand them, I'm going to give this formative assessment along the way. So they're not going to get a grade for it. The goal is that in the end they all have a better understanding of these design principles. So I'd start by asking them, which of the following does the best job at displaying information in the order of importance? And the principle we're looking at here is the F pattern design. So website one, and I've included a picture, or website two. If they're not sure, of course, they could just guess. So let's just pick the incorrect answer. Oops, i got to go to the finished form. But I'll show you what it looks like behind the scenes. So if they pick website one, which is the incorrect answer, I'm going to send them to a page where they learn more about the F pattern design because they must not have a clear understanding of it yet. If they pick the correct answer, I'm going to go ahead and send them on to the next question. So let me show you what one of those pages would look like. So if they picked the incorrect answer, it would revert them to this page. And I used a page break, so this is page two. I titled it F Pattern Designs, gave them some information about it, gave them a screenshot to help give them a, or an image to help give them a better idea. I even included a second image to help make it more clear. And then at the bottom, I asked an open-ended question. After reading the information above, explain why website one was not the best example of a good F pattern. So that way I really know if, they, if they're getting it or if they're just guessing. Um, and then, do you understand the F pattern principle? Yes, I still need some clarification. After picking one of these, it would send them on to the next question. So I hit edit and it's going to send them to the purpose question, no matter which one they choose. Here's another example. So here's my question two. What website does the best job at clearly displaying the purpose of the site for their user? Website one. And I've given a picture and website two. I could have even included the link so the kids could have gone to those. And I'll just show you what it looks like behind the scenes again. Go to the question, hit edit. If they pick website one, which was not the correct answer, it's going to send them to a page that explains the purpose principle so they learn a little bit more. If they get it correct, it'll go to the next question. And then I'll show you what my purpose page looks like. I just explain that principle, show them the picture of the correct answer. At the bottom, I ask them, explain why website one was not the best choice, and do you have a better understanding? Now let's go ahead and look at the finished form. So again, here I am having my kids do this formative assessment. And I have them, the very last page is their name. So you always want to include the name or else, unless you're a Google, um, a Google Apps for Education School, it's not going to tell you who took the survey. So you'll want to include that question. But let's just pick the wrong answer. And here's how I've included media to help the kids and to get their attention to make the concept clear. So website one was their answer, and then they're going to hit continue. And I've got a completion bar here at the bottom. Website one was not the correct answer, so it's redirected me. And if you want to make it really apparent to your kids that they went down the wrong track, you can even tell them at the top, you know, correct or incorrect. So that way they know how they're doing as they go. And that's up to you as a teacher, what works best for your students. So I said website two was a better example of the F pattern. Then I explained the F pattern here. Give them some examples, ask them to explain themselves. Do you understand? Yes. Now it sends us on to question two. And here's what happens if I pick the correct answer. It just sends me on to question three. So this is an interactive form. So students aren't going to go through and just get a grade 
The idea is that when we get to the end of this, we all have a better understanding of that concept. And that's what I want you all to do with your students. And one last thing, to share your form, you would hit send form. And you can get the link to share it here. To embed it on your professional portfolio that we're working on, you just hit the embed. And you can choose the size you want and you can copy this code and paste that in on your professional portfolio. If you are using your school account and it's a Google Apps for Education school, you might want to make sure that you've unchecked um, this option. Like mine says, must have a New Albany Floyd County login to view this form. So I had to uncheck that or else we won't be able to view it. If you have any questions, please contact me at calcassi at ius.edu.